we've got here is the Grey Nichols Ultimate. So this saw most of the season, including pre-season. It's had a fairly good use. What we're going to do with this is just the basics, which is taking off that scuff sheet, getting rid of all the gum, inspecting it for any cracks, and gluing those. And then we'll put the uh, scuff sheet back on. Basically, all I've got is a common household hairdryer. You all must have one of these. And I'm just going to put it at the uh, top heat settings and loosen the glue. When heat's introduced to it, it will basically lose its adhesion and we'll be able to peel it back across the grains. If we go up or down the grains, we're just going to peel the grains off. I don't want to go anywhere near my stickers. So we're just working on the playing surface. So in this particular case here, what I actually did with the scuff sheet is I actually trimmed it to the edge and put the edge tape over the top to keep it glued. So the actual scuff sheet is only on the face, that's why it's not peeling all the way over. There was also a repair that I had to do during the year, which you'll see revealed as we get further into it. So keep going with that. So at this point when I'm peeling it off and I'm starting to bring it down, i am really got the heat on it. I don't want any of that wood being removed, particularly where there might be cracks. So I'm really applying the heat. So we've got that off pretty much in one piece. There's no wood that's come off of it. You can see here that we've still got a lot of the gunk and um, edge tape left over. Edge tape is an absolute pain in the butt to remove. There's not really a lot you can do about that. Just supply the heat and get all that fibre off. The way that I tend to clean these bats up is using you know, turpentine or white spirits. So at this point I grab a whole heap of paper towel and I've got my cheap household mineral turpentine or white spirit. So this is going to break down the glue. That's what its job is. But the glue is pretty sticky right at the moment. So basically Whilst we're wetting it like this, all we're doing is just basically trying to treat it. The, the mineral turpentine will also get off the red marks as well. But if we just, just get that onto that area of the glue, that will start to loosen the glue. I'm not applying too much pressure because I don't want to let this stick. Those scuff sheets that I use, look, they're just magnificent as far as the amount of residue that's been left behind. The, the fibre tape itself has actually left the most gunk. The uh, scuff sheet has not really left a lot. Well done to Eddie. So have a look at that coming off. So this is the same scuff sheet that a lot of the, the English bat manufacturers and all the big ones use. I've managed to get the contact for it. And you can see there as I'm now going over that edge, that gunk all coming off. So we're not doing any damage to the bat at this point. We're purely just using mostly the abrasiveness of the paper towel and the solution to take off as much of the glue as possible. Now with cheap scuff sheet, you're gonna have a lot more problems. They'll break apart, shatter. If you've been watching the channel, I've tried all different substitutes to try and save. So I've got to say that, I mean, look how good that bat looks and that's had heaps of nets. Uh, game use, really good. It's even had a repair, which I had to do when I cracked the toe, which you'll see as I turn it over. Not my greatest moment, passing cover drive outside, I've stumped hearing a loud crack. Never ever done that with a bat in the past. You know, the, they, we talk about the older style bats, but they definitely weren't as dry as the new ones. Also, I would have had a round toe, so maybe I would have got away with it without damage. But the flatter toe introduces an area of weakness. My poor playing ability took full advantage of that. And cracked the toe of the bat, but it's all fixed. I glued it all up and put a couple of dowels in for extra reinforcement and haven't had any issue at all. You can see no cracks on the edges of this bat. So the bat's in great condition. Probably if you know the bat's gonna be a headache for you, with lots of cracking and delamination that get somebody who's a professional repairer to do it because there's a lot of stuff you have to purchase uh, glues and things like that and experience that for a one-off attempt if you're not going to do it on a regular basis i wouldn't bother buying it i'll just get somebody to fix it for you so i'm just going over this area where the stamp is to try and get the glue off without removing that stupid black stamp. So now I can actually use the same paper towel 
which has got a fair bit of turpentine still left in it to go over the uh, stickers and anywhere where balls hit and you'll see the cherry start to clean up. That is now off. It's been a couple of days uh, and the glue itself, there's no tackiness left on either edge. A little bit of tackiness there, but that's because I applied some extra glue there. Back of the bat, I can't feel any tackiness. So all that gum and that has been taken off just purely by using mineral turpentines on some paper towel. As far as the main work here and on this edge, uh, I'll be sanding up until about here. I don't want to go over the brandings because they'll just come straight off. I'm going to be using random orbital sander. Uh, I'll take off the pad that's on it at the moment and I'll put on 240 grit pad. They're basically a throwaway item. Do your sanding and then throw them away. You can get much better quality uh, sanding pads like these ones here and they seem to last a lot longer. And I'll fix this to the side. Uh, to protect the stickers I'll just put a bit of masking tape down so that even if I run slightly over I'm not going to wreck my stickers. So I'm actually going to start first on the edges and then I'll finish on the face. got rid of what I wanted to get rid of which is that extra layer of oil so that's pretty good there could do a little bit more there but I'll just finish that with the other grade so now I've got a 320 probably can end it you probably could end at 240 this is not the greatest paper so to do now is just do a little bit of hand sanding. point with that sanding is at the end is more of a polishing technique is to try and vary the directions the sanding marks are going all in one direction and any sort of real deep scratches will stand out they're going different ways and circular patterns and then finishing on the, on the grain travel is more likely to get rid of some. so that's nice and dry now if I was going to just be applying another scuff sheet uh, I might actually just put a little bit of bat wax on it and give it a polish uh, but I'll first do the toe Okay, so here's my cheap Bunnings bench grinder. I've replaced uh, the grinding pad with a sanding pad. And over on this side, I've got a drill upside down with just a cheap uh, mop top on it. You can see these fine vertical lines. That's just when I finished off going across the sanding pad. I just want to put some uh, grooves in just so that the shoe goo's got something to stick to. Now I have actually oiled in the past bats all the way through with one coat on the toe and then I've finished uh, with a clear lacquer. Only reason I'll do it that way or if I do uh, shoe goo over the top of oil I've made sure that it's dried for at least a good week. We want to seal this as much as possible. So I've got some of my King of Clubs bat butter that Leo made. He went some extraordinary lengths to get this. He got, uh, I don't know, special wax from somewhere and special oil. Um, it's actually really good stuff. It's, I mean, I've made my own uh, bat wax, uh, which you can see here. Uh, similar. That's the one I've made. The instructions are on my Facebook page, by the way, if you go to notes. 
and just the quantity of um, oil to wax is something you'll have to work out on your own. Mine's got a little bit more wax than than oil. This one I think's got more uh, oil. So the general thing with bat wax is your body temperature should be enough to melt it. And obviously we want to get it as much into the face. It's going to just form a little seal for us. And that wax, the beeswax itself, is going to be easy for the scuff sheet to adhere to. So I'm just putting it on by hand. Uh, you saw how much I put on, it was just a tiny little amount. So the next step is I'm going to let that dry. That's normally two to three hours, but I'm actually going out uh, to catch up with my friends this afternoon. So that's probably going to sit there till uh, tomorrow whenever I get around to it. And then we'll whack it on the polisher and we'll put some scuff sheet on. A couple of things occurred to me that I didn't talk about yesterday. Uh, one was ear protection, one was dust. So this fine little dust that you create when you're sanding is not very good for you. Me with asthma, I've noticed it clogs me up. I've actually got a different sander with a vacuum attachment on it. Also got face masks, which I didn't use yesterday, obviously, because I was talking. The other thing is ear protection. Your hearing can be damaged very, very easily. Definitely with knocking, I've had more issues with my hearing. So I've begun using these whenever I'm knocking, never without. And I've actually found uh, because it deadens the noise so much, I can actually hear a lot more of what's going on in the back when I'm knocking, when I've got those on than without. So that's a little bit of that. So we've left the bat wax on now for 24 hours. And normally you could leave it on for five or six. It actually is a little bit tacky still. I can feel that on the bat. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, I'm just gonna take it over to my little polisher and I'm gonna run that over it and try and smooth that out. So I've actually just put a fresh mop head on this. I get these from Super Cheap Auto. I think they're only about $3.50. So obviously the drill doesn't run uh, fast enough to really do uh, proper polishing work, but it's good enough to clean off residue and get a, a decent finish, but not what you would get from a proper bat maker. Okay, so back on the bench. Try and give you a better look at that. Nice and cleaned up. So to do my shugu, basically what I'm going to do Okay, so the toe guard has been done. I've done the shugu toe as you can see there. So that's got a nice shugu toe on it now. So what I'm going to do now is apply the scuff sheet and some edge tape. So for this particular one, because of that crack there, go edge tape under scuff. The edge tape may actually hold that little cracking area there together a little bit better. I'm just going to go back over the same area I was before. I'll turn this to the edge so I can see what I'm doing. I normally go like a two-thirds type thing, two-thirds on the blade and a third over. Do the best I can with one hand. And as far as putting this stuff down, I tend to work from the centre out. Like that towards the toe. Not if you start at one end in particular and work the other way you tend to get like little kinks and things like, like that so and give it a little bit of a curve on it. If you go straight you're just going to have problems. That's that. So that's my edge tape applied. Scuff sheet is a little bit like putting a facing on a mobile. If there's any dust around it's just going to get stuck on it. Thing. So I've got a little guillotine over there, um, so I've cut that as straight as I can. 
So what I tend to do is line it up with my edge tape that I've already applied. And fill that up as well. If there's any imperfections or whatever, lift up and across. Don't lift up or down the grain. So fix anything that's going on with the tape. Because obviously that's not stuck properly. But you can see just how well that sticks to the scuff tape. And then we'll just bring that down and press it out towards the edges. So you can see a little bit of dust has got under there and there and there. And there, so good. I'm not too fussed. I tend to do it at the bench where I've got a roller. Decided to move down here where I haven't got a roller. And well, that's all right. So there we go. I'll tidy up the edges and just trim those off and off camera. And that's my bat done for next season. Uh, I probably will go over with edge tape one more time across here uh, just to add a little bit of reinforcement. So thanks very much for uh, sitting through this little refurb. Uh, hopefully you found something out. Uh, remember to like and subscribe to Cricket Bat Info. Check out the Facebook channel. There's extra photos on there pretty much of every review I do, not this sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, thanks very much. So this has been my refurb.